Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor with the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation. I also manage the Aviation Safety Program at the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health here in Anchorage. Working in safety, I'm always glad to see someone who helps people prepare for what might be their worst day. This evening, we are excited to have an expert in safety training. Clint Homestead is an instructor at Learn to Return Training Systems. Welcome to Hangar Flying, Clint. Thank you for having me. Learn to Return has a lot of really interesting sounding courses from bear guarding training to tower climbing and wilderness medicine. But we're going to be talking about your aviation based training tonight. Clint, can you tell us about the basic training that is available for pilots and passengers to help prepare them for a crash on land? Well, the primary course that we have for that is labeled Aviation Land Crash Survival. And it's a one day course and our bullet points that we want to get across to people and talk about is what you have in regards to accidents, the impacts, egress, and then we talk lastly all is survival on land. And how we do that is we actually, the first part of the day is we go into our accidents whether they're, whether they're pilot error or if they're mechanical error, which can range, which can vary hugely. Also, in addition to that, during the morning, we actually invert students inside our rolling invert escape trainer. It's an aluminum trainer that is, designs, that is designed to help students understand what it feels like to be one, inverted upside down in a four point restraint harness, and two, see if they can unweight their seat belt and try and lower themselves to the roof of the aircraft, which is now the floor. Also, this, the lastly of all we use this for is to show people how to track out and find door mechanisms, outside references of an airframe, in addition to that, ejecting their seatbelt and getting to out of the aircraft. Wow, and do they do that inside or outside? This is just the morning session, and this is all inside classroom before they've gone to the field at all. Well, after lunch, we take them into the field and what we do is, is we train them in the post-crash scenario. And that's categorized using the his, her principle. One is H for hazard, trying to get away from the airframe to the nose of the aircraft where there isn't a lot of bad things that hurt you in the back. Also, we have injuries that we get upon impact. So we have to work on treating those injuries while we're out in the field. Students will apply splints, they will stop bleeders out in the woods in the field setting. In addition to that, we teach them how to build personal shelters, improvised clothing. We, we teach them how to make improvised footwear out of pieces of the airframe that are warmer than a sub-zero temperature boot made in the construction time zone. And also what we do is we also move from there into teach them what to eat what different types of foods, and also we go and move into starting fires from scratch, and all primitive fire building, and then lastly of all, rescue and getting to back home to your family. Wow, that's pretty comprehensive. <laughs> um, can you tell me in your opinion, what would be the most important thing that people could do to increase their odds of surviving a plane crash? I would believe training and repetition. Training and repetition, what training does is it gives you the awareness of what you're, of the area you're going into and the type of travel and the safety precautions to take along the way. And then repetition is that muscle memory. For example, when you get into a rental car, the first five minutes is trying to figure out where that window opener is, how to get out of the car, you go to hit the blinker and instead your, your windshield wiper comes on. After a while though, it becomes second nature. That's the muscle memory portion that we teach at our school. So then people can get out of airframes in high stress scenarios. And where we want them to be is we want them to get out of the airframe, whatever, it was a rotor wing or fixed wing, and they don't even know what happened. It just happens like that. So they're doing it from muscle memory more than recognition and thinking about it? The first step is recognizing that it's actually happening 
and then acting based upon that recognition. Once you recognize that something's happening, then you can move directly into your muscle memory and utilizing your training that you've done over and over again. Okay, and do you find that a certain type of person does better? The tough person does better, the lucky person does better, the person that's dressed better for the environment that they might end up in, and also the people that are, that are more motivated to get home alive. For me, it's my three and a half year old daughter that would motivate me the most to get home alive. That's great. That's some really good advice right there. Thank you. You're welcome. This is some really good information, Clint. Thank you for being here with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please tune in to our next show when we learn about training for underwater aircraft egress. On behalf of Alaska Public Media, thanks for tuning in to Hangar Flying. Clint gave us some great information. Winter flying in Alaska has some special challenges that we need to take into consideration to stay safe. Until next time, fly safely and train for the best circumstances, but be prepared for the worst.